Physics Lab Course, the Stomp Rocket Lab. We'll start with the objectives of the lab, then we will review some material that is required in order to perform the lab, Kinematics Equation 1, Free Fall, and then Kinematics Equation 2. Then there'll be instructions on how to perform the lab, and then how to do the calculations. Objectives. We will use an algebraic approach and that will determine the initial velocity and the height of a stomp rocket based on measurements of the time the stomp rocket was in the air. This lab, coupled with the hopper lab to be completed next, or perhaps you did the hopper lab first depending on the weather, they show the elegance of the kinematics equations in being able to determine the height from a time measurement or being able to determine the flight time from a height measurement. The following student learning objectives should result from the lab. We'll review the kinematics equations using initial velocity and acceleration due to gravity, and then practice manipulating equations and solving for unknown variables. In the next few sections, we'll see the theory behind these objectives. Here are the concepts that we'll be covering. Again, the first and second kinematics equations, how to solve these equations, and the acceleration due to gravity, otherwise known as g. The first two of the kinematics equations, that's the first, this is the second, should be covered in your class before teaching the lab. The first and third kinematics equations, this one and this one, are used in the Hopper lab. Sign conventions are very important so the math will match what's happening in the physical world. So here's what we'll be using in this lab. X will be the final position and it'll be measured in meters. The initial position, x0, is also measured in meters. Often the initial position is set to zero. If the final position is above that initial position, so here's our x0 and here's x, then the final position is positive. If the final position is below the initial position, then it's negative. Sometimes the final position is set to zero. If the initial position is above that, then the initial position is positive. If the initial position is below it, then the initial position is negative. Continuing our conventions, we have v, which is the final velocity, measured in meters per second, and v0, which is the initial velocity. For both final and initial velocity, forward, to the right, and upward are commonly assigned positive values. Backward, to the left, and downward are commonly assigned negative values. You can of course switch them around for different problems, but right now let's stick with these conventions. And time is always measured in seconds, and it typically starts at zero, and it is always positive. Finally, we have acceleration, which is measured in meters per second squared. So if you speed up in the forward or upward direction, or to the right, we commonly call that positive acceleration. If you're slowing down, that would be negative acceleration. That kind of makes sense, but let's look at these two. If you speed up in the backward or downward direction, that's negative acceleration. So you're speeding up, but you have a negative acceleration. This is why we don't use the word decelerate in physics. So let's give an example of that. Acceleration will be v final minus v initial over time. So our example Let's say we have a final velocity of negative 7, and we sped up from negative 2, and you divide that by time. You carry out the math, and what do you get there? You get a negative 5 over time, negative 5 meters per second over time. That's negative. You have a negative acceleration. And then conversely, if you slow down in the backward-downward direction, that would be positive acceleration. 